freedom to choose the jobs you want when you want. This video is sponsored by Avail Logistics. With the driver demand at an all time high, now is the time for drivers to come together and fight for fair conditions, more control, better rates and more freedom. This can be done through the Avail app. Avail wants to get rid of agencies so that drivers can get better wages, have control of where they work and choose their own work pattern. Want to know more? Download the Avail app today. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Lou, thank you very much for joining, do appreciate it. You can join me in Cobham Services, where we stayed for the night. We have got one drop to do in Croydon this morning, then we've got to go get some pallets from some places. Just done our daily checks, we've just been to put some rubbish in the bin, so, so we can crack on now basically. But yeah, we've got only seven pallets to come off on this first drop in Croydon, so we are gonna crack on. It is wet and it's windy, raining what a day it's going to be okay you join me on caterham bypass we're only a couple of miles away now from where we need to be um i think this was supposed to be delivered yesterday but we ran out of time uh they didn't take deliveries after half past three in the afternoon that's the only problem with this sort of stuff that we're delivering now it's um all the roof slating a lot of the places don't take deliveries until well after a certain time sort of thing so uh, on one hand it's quite annoying, on the other hand you do sometimes get to have an early finish. <laughs> so um, yeah, no, paperwork says uh, no deliveries after half three uh, and also no deliveries before 10 a.m. 10 a.m. So I phoned them up yesterday and I said um, I'll be there about half past four, is that too late? And they were like, yeah, we wouldn't take, we wouldn't tip you at half past four. I said, all right, I said, well, what's the earliest I can get loaded, uh, sorry, delivered tomorrow morning? What's the earliest? He goes, ah, oh, you can turn up about eight o'clock drive and someone should be into Tibia. So, all right, cool, see you at eight o'clock. So I got it down by two hours as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to be there. We're actually going to be there just after eight o'clock. It's going to be ten past eight because we've got caught a bit of traffic just now on the M25. So, um, yeah, we are a little bit behind schedule. Oh, look, Anne Summers. <laughs> I've been here before, I know, yeah. I've been here before. Anyway. So today, we've got some horns blasting somewhere. Today, we've got to deliver these seven pallets in Croydon. Then we've got to nip over to Reading and we've got to get loaded with pallets. Um, the particular place in Reading we're going to, I have been there before, twice actually, but once was unsuccessful and once was successful. We want the third exit. So um, yeah, I've had the first time I ever went to this place in Reading that we're going to be going to later. It was too late again, they wouldn't load me, after they had to load their own vans. So I ended up going back the next day. And I only took like, I don't know, something like 40 pallets or something. Not a lot at all. So it could be the case for that today as well, who knows. So we've got to go to Red and get loaded with pallets. Don't know how many. We've got to take that to Chep in Swindon, get them offloaded. Then we've got to go to Audi in Swindon. Could be interesting, because I do believe the last time I went to Audi in Swindon, I don't know, it might have been fault lifted on from a, from a bay. I can't remember. And obviously I'm on a flatbed, so they won't do that. So it's going to have to be a side load. Um, whether they want to do it or not, I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. My boss knows I'm on a flatbed, so it's not something I need to inform him of. But um, yeah, so we go get loaded from Audi later. Then again, go back to Chep and Swindon and get that tipped off. And then I believe it will be a case of going back to the yard and loading up with timber ready for tomorrow. So yeah, it's one of those rare days where um, we've actually got most of the day planned. But um, yeah, it's quite rare that. <laughs> so yeah, we can just get on with the day basically. Right, this place we're delivering to now, this morning, we're only a mile away, less than. <clears throat> Paperwork specifically says you have to reverse in. I've looked at Google Maps and it's, well, <laughs> It's, it, it, might be, it might be tight, I don't know. We'll just see when we get there. Um, but it looks like we've got to go past the entrance and then reverse it on in. But the, the entrance we're reversing into is a car park by the looks of it. Like a long, thin car park. And um, yeah, if there's lots of cars going in there, it's going to be busy. 
hopefully when we get there we can you know put hazards on position ourselves in such a way that people can figure out that that's what we want to do and then hopefully people can move out our way hopefully right next left next left next left next left we are going to start indicating oh no we're not because we're quite far away that's the next left we want this next left there we go um, yeah we definitely need the other side of the road to make that corner especially seeing as there's a bollard in there and a car oh man yeah we definitely need the other side of the road Oh, nice one, car driver. He's realised what I want to do. I've got a police car behind me as well. Gonna have to mount the curb just to make the corner. Don't mind this car here. Lovely jubbly. <coughs> right, hazards on, beacons on. Is the police car following me in? No, he's not. <laughs> I had to mount the curb to get in. Right, we've got to reverse into here. Hazards are on, beacons are on. Oh, there's loads of them in there. Is there a pedestrian still here? Yeah, I saw a pedestrian. Let the pedestrian go first. You're gonna have to wait, car. Lovely jabbly. Left lock again, thank you. Oh, we've got cars on the left waiting for us as well. Right, so now it's just a case of reversing all the way up. These cars are going to follow me up as well. <laughs> <coughs> Let's go for reversing gear number two. Go a bit quicker. Although we do have a speed bump coming up. There's a speed bump. Next one. Speed bump, speed bump, speed bump. Probably need to start angling. Lovely jubbly. Now we're getting over into this side of the road because where we are delivering is on this side. Now, where are we going to position ourselves? I might have to get out and just double check where they want me. We do have vans in here as well. So let me just, uh, well they might be able to do it like that. I'll just park here, find out where they want me, and then we can take it from there. So uh, yeah, at least we're here. I'll leave the hazards and beacons on for now. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, this is the part of the video where we talk about the Essential New Truckers Handbook by Malcolm Green. I promise you, if you want to know anything regarding HGVs or, or working hours or anything like that, then you need to purchase this book because everything is in it. Uh, and if you are already a HGV driver and you think you already know about all this sort of stuff, buy it anyway because it's going to refine your existing skills. The Essential New Truckers Handbook by Malcolm Green. Link in the description down below. Go buy yourself a copy now. Right. We are in. We do need to move, uh, but because there's only a couple of straps, give or take, and some ratchets, I said I'll quickly take them off and then I'll move. What it is, is there's a fence over there. I've got a part next to the fence, and then they can offload both sides from one side. That's what he said. So yes, let's put these away. So the paperwork specifically said reverse in. Um, and when I phoned up yesterday to book this in, they specifically said reverse in. But 
I reckon I could have driven in where that Howard Tennant's truck is now and spun around, you know. Never mind, it is what it is. And obviously, maybe sometimes it's very busy down here. Who knows? Who knows? Looks like we've got two more to come off, maybe. Yeah, two more. Yeah, two more. You can tell by where they are positioned on the trailer. One more after this one. Very quick tip. I mean, been stationing for 10 minutes. Very quick tip. An hour and 45 minutes, just under, to uh, get to our next delivery point. As I said, should be there by half 10. Well, it should be there by quarter past 10, actually. Once it gets this off and signs the paperwork, the only problem we're going to have in a second is getting out of this junction. We've got to turn right. We've got to go the way we come, where there was a lot of traffic. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Right, lovely. Looks like he... Uh, Given me all of it. He didn't want anything then by the looks of it. Okie dokie, not a problem. Straight in the folder it goes. Folder closed up. Whack that on the bed so it don't fall off the dash. Right, we're done. Let's turn those beacons off. They make a little, 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 little. They make a racket is what I was trying to say. Bump. Yeah, so if this 10-inch lorry wasn't here, and it wasn't when I turned up, I reckon I could have uh, potentially have spun around. There's like a little island here, look. I reckon I could have gone around the other way, spun around it. But if there were any extra cars here, then yeah, it would have been difficult. But then again, I could have spun around in here as well. I could have driven up to here, reverse around there, back out again and reverse back. Never mind. Right, let's lift my mid-lift axle up because I can hear it spinning. And then we've got a, got a queue to get out of here now. It's going to be a pain in the arse to get out. I can see it happening. Uh, I see the traffic. And also, it's annoying because I've got to be on the other side of the road because of these parked cars here. So no one's going to be able to get in. I'm lucky this 24-hour rescue and recovery lorry will let me out. If I'm lucky. Is he going to let me out? He isn't looking at me. I think he's let me out. He must be. OK, no, he's not letting me out. Now we're stuck, aren't we? I'm gonna have to go back. Go back. Go back. Are you? Do just go back. Honestly. This is like, oh, this is why people need more lessons when driving cars, like how much room lorries need. There's nothing I could do about that. I said on the way out, I'm going to be blocking the other side of the road waiting to get out. But if I, if I didn't block the other side of the road to wait to get out, I'd be so far away, no one would let me out anyway, so I'd be stuck. <laughs> Honestly, beggar's belief. And he's there shaking his head at me, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? That's a daily occurrence, that. A car driver's not realising how much room you need. It's not his fault, and it was a man, by the way. It's not his fault. He hasn't been taught. He doesn't know. It's the government's fault. They should tell people <laughs> how much room trucks need to get out. Had he have just stopped further back in the first place and forward planned and saw that I was blocking the road, then I would have been able to get out, no problem. We wouldn't have had that issue. And uh, he would have been able to get in a lot quicker. It would have been a lot worse if, by the time he realised he needed to go back more, it would have been a lot worse if there were vehicles that had gone right up close to him, because then we were very stuck. So yeah. For a moment there, he was just looking at me like, where do I need to go? And I was like, back. <laughs> back, mate. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, 
Um, it's relatively free flowing. It's, it is not fast, yes, but we are going. We are going. So let's make our way to Reading. See you in a bit. This Black Friday, save 30% on TomTom Go Navigation. Normally $69.99, but now only $48.99. Drive with confidence, knowing that you will get to your destination on time, every time, with the TomTom Tom live traffic, and also get personalized routing to suit your vehicle. Enter your length, your width, your height, your top speed, your axle weight, and let TomTom Tom do the hard work for you. Remember, 30% off, link is in the description down below. Right, we are still a good couple of miles away from where we need to be. But I'm going to start filming now. We can make that. Oh, we need to turn right now. All clear. Ah, yeah. So this is the turn I was referring to earlier. I was like, yeah, I can make that. I remember that. But I do need to get in the left-hand side lane to make the right-hand turn. Which is probably annoying the vehicle behind me. <laughs> Who wants to go left? Yeah, we turn right down here and it's sort of like a high street. It's very busy all the time. It'd be nice if we can get straight through. It's always busy. All right, come on then. Make a right hand turn. Lovely. We've got a van parts nice and close to this turn in bit. All clear. Oh, it smells nice around here. Like, like microwavable food sort of smell. Let's go down here. And then, yeah, so you see the low bridge up ahead. And you're like, crap, I'm not going to make it through that. But A, we're not going through it, and B, actually, we might make it through it, actually, I don't know that. There we go. 3.5 metres. We won't make that. Lovely jubbly. Right, so which one were they? I think they're down here. Near 21. Just in here. We do have a car behind us, so we've got a hazards on. Assess the situation. Not an awful lot of room in there. And we're not going to be able to spin round in there, so we're going to have to reverse in, I think, off the road to go on in. Yep, I think that's what we're going to do. Number 19 now. We do have to be careful, because we do have some parked cars next to us. Seat belt off. Do like a blind side reverse but it's got to be an almost 90 degree turn i think just to get it lined up Straight up a bit now.
think that'll do for now. Let that car through. Right, let's go tell them where we're here. We might have to come back out yet. There's a lot of cars around. Right, see you in a bit. So, basically, they don't want to come out and get wet because they've got to deal with frozen stuff and they go in the freezer so they get ice, basically. So they don't want to get wet. So I've reversed in. They're loading it on the back and they're just going to push it along. So it's going to be basically just have pallets on the back and I'll strap all up properly and all that. But I've measured it and we should get out. <laughs> As long as I've measured it correctly. It needs a wash, doesn't it? Look at that. So yeah, we're back in the truck now. Uh, it's quite wet out, can you tell? Boss has got new uh, new hoodies, but they're kind of, I don't know, like almost semi-waterproof. <laughs> the rain to stay is on it. Um, so yeah, uh, when I first arrived, it was, they basically said, yeah, we can't load it over. We, uh, we can't get out, not allowed out in the, in the rain. So I'm like, okay, why? Uh, and they watch my channel as well, by the way. Uh, they said you do YouTube. I was like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, sorry, sidetracked. By the way, thanks for watching. Do appreciate it if you're watching this. Um, basically, because they work with frozen products, they've got like a massive freezer and the freezer. I've actually just been inside one, very cold. Makes sense. If they get wet, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, they're gonna struggle when they go in the fridge and the freezer. They're gonna get colder quicker, and maybe even get ice and stuff on them. So um, yeah, they got to stay in the dry. So they said the only way they can do it is if they put it on the back of the truck and then I pump it down. I said, um, well, I'm not getting on the flatbed. If it was a curtain side of trailer, yeah, not a problem. Um, you know, you've got edge protection and whatnot. If, if companies can dictate what you can and can't deliver and they dictate you must have health and safety in place, you can't do this because you need that, then I have a right as well to say, no, hang on a minute, I want health and safety. I want to have some edge protection myself. So I, I said, no, and said, I'm not getting up on there. So I phoned the boss up and just said the same thing, basically. I said, what do you want me to do? And uh, then he said, well, if they're happy with it, put it on the, put it on the back end and slide it across. So that's what they're going to do. That is what's happening. So we're going to have 75 pallets on, all on the back of the trailer. Um, it's not too much of an issue because uh, they're quite light anyway. Uh, obviously, double sta um, strap them all up, but then also crisscross on the front as well. So it's got um, something stopping it from the front and then obviously the back as well. So that's what we're going to do in a minute. It's only, I think they're going 12 high, so it should only be five rows. So it'd be five straps over, and then two on the front, and there's seven. And um, I think the back could be right. Yeah, the back should be fine. It's more the front. Um, you're more likely to brake harder than what you want to accelerate off, so. Seven straps should do it. He just said, go sit in your truck and uh, give you a honk when it's done. So yeah, gonna get these on. Then we're gonna head to um, Chepin's and then get them tipped off. Then we've got to pop to Audi, get loaded. Apparently that's a full load. And I, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but I have a feeling that the last time I did that was on the curtain side on, I had to pump them on as well, so we'll see what happens there. But yeah, yeah, it's all gravy, baby. Right, we're loaded. We just gotta watch ourselves coming out. Matey boy's watching as well. Lovely. Give him a little toot. Well, I've got to reset my suspension because I have lowered it to get out. Let's just get out of here. Nice and slow. We'll park up on this main drag here. And we can have a look. <laughs> it looks really weird. Might throw another strap over as well. We're really tight for space in there because we're right up against the wall and stuff, so. Now that we're out, I can uh, get a better look at it. Make sure it's all okay. All right, let's have a look. Right, so yeah, it's just on the back end. Look. So we've got a strap going right over the front one and also crossed as well. So that's forward uh, protection. And then these are strapped. I think that'd be all right. As long as I don't drive for like a Dick, we'll be all right. Let's reset the suspension. I lowered it, so I definitely had enough to get out. But uh, yeah, it's not much, it's only, that won't weigh too much on the back of that trailer. Just go a little bit careful, go around corners. This uh, obviously is gonna be a bit twisty on the back, so just be a bit careful. That's the best that we could do. So, yeah. Right, good to go. Let's adjust myself, seatbelt on. 
yeah, so it's only five rows. I'm gonna put my mid lift axle down. As you know, I won't. I'll have even less grip, I think, if I do that. Yeah, it's only five, five rows, so it's very light on the back. And uh, we're only an hour away from where we need to be as well, so let's just do this, just test the uh, stability of the load. Oh yeah, it's fine. It's not pushing me or driving me around in any particular way, so we're all good. We're all good. Right, look, it gets a bit narrow down here, look. Bump. Rams come in. Come on down. Yeah, we definitely wouldn't get under that bridge there. Not at all. Not at all. Ah, oh, we've got a lorry coming down now. Hopefully he's seen us. Not really anywhere I can go. Once this lorry goes, I'll go at the same time. Lovely. Synchronisation. You don't need to wait there, mate. I've got loads of room. Thank you, though. Excellent. So, yeah, an hour or two, we are at Chep and Swindon. Obviously, we might be at Chep and Swindon for a while as well. Sometimes you can turn up and you'll be there for, like, literally four hours. Other times you can turn up and you're in and out in 20 minutes. And because we ain't got much on at all, we obviously won't take long to get offloaded. We get there, we queue up, we quickly take the straps off. Um, and then, um, yeah, go on in, they take it off, I'll go get paperwork and then crack on then to Audi. I believe Audi is a full load of pallets, a full load. It's actually a little bit annoying because it means you've got to strap it all up, obviously, that goes without saying. <laughs> but I'm going from Swindon to Swindon, so it's like, it'd be coming off again in like 20 minutes time, do you know I mean? Less than. <laughs> so, but uh, oh, obviously we've got, to, we've got to strap up, so not a lot we can do about that. Anyway, let's crack on. I'll see you when we get a little bit closer. See you in a bit. Right, yo! Just around the corner from Chuck. This is what's known as Blay Grove. This lorry is definitely going to want to be taking up some of my room. I um, I used to work down here on Blay Grove. Oh, there's a cash and carry I used to work at. Good times. Back when I was very young. Makes me sound old saying it like that. Go left. Level eight. Ugh. So yeah, so we're gonna get these whacked off. Moment of truth is to see uh, how busy it is. This lorry in front might even be going to Chep yet, for we know. The, uh, who were they from? Belgium. A lot of uh, a lot of foreign trucks come down here delivering stuff. Oh no! We got we're queuing out from the road. A we're queuing up from the road, and B looks like this lorry is going into Chep as well. Hello, mate. Might be here for a little while. Yeah, no worries, mate. Alright, see you in a bit. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate, thanks. Right, so there's been an accident on the uh, 419. Apparently, a tipper lorry has gone into the back of someone, which don't look good. Hey, us. Anyway, that's where I used to work, about this cash and carry there. So, we are out on the road. There is a chance that the lorry queuing to get in is trying to use the machine, not realising they don't have to use the machine anymore. This is not ideal. Yeah, he's giving me the nod. The nod of, ha, you're in for a long wait, mate. Tell me about it. Well, I see once we actually get in there, I've got a lorry behind me now as well. I wonder if he's gonna go to Chep. 
downturns, I don't think so. If he was, he'd be getting a horn blast. Although he's going slow. Ah, he's turning right. Oh, what a day. Right, we are now in. That's the main thing. I don't know what the hold up was. We went forward quite a bit. I think he was having a break, I reckon. So, straps are undone. Like I said, it was only, it's only five or so anyway. So, straps are undone. So, we can go in, give him a reference, and um, take him off, and then head straight to Audi to get our next stuff. But, uh, like I said, apparently there is uh, an accident, so gotta be careful. Right, we're tipped. We have been in here for about an hour and a half. <laughs> Waiting to get in for an hour and a half. Well, an hour and 20 minutes. And then tipped in like five or 10. <laughs> so it hasn't taken long, taken long at all. So yeah, we're now gonna head over to Audi, get loaded. And then we'll, uh, we'll be back here again. Let's get going. Right, okay, we've just got loaded with pallets now. There we go. Uh, we've got 16, because they're Euros, there's more of them. So there's 16 rows and there's 16 high. And uh, there's two columns. So 16 times 32 is 512. So we've got 512 pallets, but uh, it's 16, 16 straps. So it takes long to do them up. Like I said, it's annoying because we're literally taking them 15 minutes down the road. So we've got to undo them all again in a minute. <laughs> right, let's get out of here. Right, engine on. Let's put our destination in. It's a recent destination, so that's good. Chap Swindon. Drive. We, we want to make sure that traffic is uh, turned on as well. So we've got to connect to the Wi-Fi on the phone. Connected. Lovely, right. Could be fun getting out because there's trucks parked up. So yes, could be fun. But yeah, 16 pallets. We'll, uh, we're, we're still under 4.2 metres, so that's good. But I am uh, wanting your space, mate. Lovely. I might have to go on the curb to get out because of these lorries parked here. I'll we'll try not to. No, we just made it. Just made it out without touching the uh, the curb. Anyway, so ETA to, ch uh, to check is 1531, half past three. Uh, uh, it'd be nice if we're not as there. Uh, for as long as we was just now, an hour and a half, we were there for just gone. So, um, yeah, it'd be nice if we're not there that long this time. Maybe we turn up and uh, get out of there by quarter past four. That'd be nice. Then we could be back in the yard for like quarter to five. We've got to get loaded out the yard uh, for Hereford, but that's for tomorrow. Be a load of timber. I think it's timber anyway. And then... Um, I've just been told that I'm off to Scotland tomorrow, or at least heading my way up there tomorrow anyway. Um, something to do with boat weights. I think they call them mooring weights. I've done them before, so... Um, that sh should be an upcoming video, I would expect. So, yeah, let's get this off to, uh, to Chep in Swindon. I suspect, for time this is tipped, it'll probably be dark. Hey Siri, what time is sunset? Hey Siri, what time is sunset? Hmm. Anyway, let's get this off, like I said. 
and uh, we'll see what time it is, but yeah, I reckon it'll be dark. See you in a bit. Right, unfortunately, um, there is a queue, <laughs> and we're actually further back than what we were last time, so I think we're going to be here for quite a while. I mean, I've taken all the straps off now, we've been here for 20 minutes already, and we haven't budged since I arrived, and there's at least five trucks in front of me. So yeah, late one. It's going to be late tonight. Might not even get loaded. Might not even get loaded tonight. Right, we're sitting. we just got to go grab our paperwork now. It is obviously dark, as you can see. We got here, I think, half past three, something like that. It's ten past five now. <laughs> Been here in a while. Uh, Audi to Swindon, yes. Print. One copy. Print. Really, Lena? Um, yeah, anyway, there's paperwork. So, uh, <laughs> let's jump back in the truck. Make our way back to the yard. I'm not sure if we're getting loaded or not yet. Because we won't be back until... Well, it's going to take a good 20 minutes to get back. So, we've gone half past five. So, we'll see if they're loaded or not. They might do, they might not. Let's go find out. Right, we are just around the corner from the yard now. And i got... A call from my boss saying um, that we'll be loading in the morning so we won't be loading up tonight um, because it's pretty much quarter to six and the guys go home at six so it's a bit late to to start loading me so um, yeah we're just gonna pull into the yard hopefully we can get in they got traffic lights here look where I've uh, just come down and if they go too far back it'd be blocking the entrance to the yard <laughs> now nah, it looks like we'll be good Looks like we'll be good. So yeah, we'll be coming in tomorrow morning to to, uh, to load and strap up. I think half past six, he said. So not too bad. And then we can just crack on then. Unfortunately, we just got held up a little bit at Chep on both occasions. We were there for like an hour and a half on the first one. And I think it was like an hour and 40 on the second one. Um, so yeah, a bit annoying, but it is what it is. Gates are shut. I think they just closed it up. <laughs> well, I'll be opening it back up now, mate. Thanks for that. <laughs> Told them what time I was going to be here and they still shut the bloody gate. <clears throat> Literally said I'll be here at quarter to six. And they still closed the gate. Cheers. Right. In we go. We'll have to close that gate back up because he won't want to close it again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're going to park here. Yes, we are. Oh, all the lights just turned off. <laughs> Good job I got lights on the back of this truck. I can see what I'm doing a bit more. I'm literally about to do a manoeuvre and they just switch all the lights off as well. I think that'll do. They need, uh, they need me parked back so then uh, they can see the gate on the cameras. Right. That's just done. That is just done. It's a shame because I bought a new head torch. Um, would have given me a chance to use it tonight while strapping up. Yeah, boy. Yes. <laughs> flashy, flashy. I don't even. I don't even know if you can see. Um, but it'd be dark in the morning, so I'll use that in the morning. Not a problem. Right. We got to. Hang on. If I turn that light off, turn that one. Sorry, turn that one on. Turn that one off. Don't, we don't need that GoPro on anymore either, so that can come off. Um, yeah, so we are done. We'll just do some paperwork now. Uh, what time did we start this morning? It was like 7 o'clock or something. I had quite a late start this morning. 6, 5, 1, 7, 3, 7, yard. And uh, 17.45, like I said. 
All right, let's turn the lights off as well. So yeah, that's just done for the day. And we, tomorrow I've got to get loaded with timber for, uh, maybe, maybe I should have it on. Tomorrow I've got to get loaded for tim uh, with timber for Hereford. And then I think the boss said something about me going to ooh, up Scotland way. I can't remember exactly what he said. Now I think there was a couple of jobs to do somewhere. I don't know on the way up and then something back down potentially. Oh, I can't remember, um, but it doesn't matter. We'll just do what we uh, what we have to do. So yeah, anyway, that's the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If not, well, I don't know, don't know what to say. <laughs> but thank you anyway for watching. I do appreciate it. Until next time, drive safe, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.